and gentlemen, welcome to section 8.6, Solving Rational Equations and Inequalities, Part 1. Now, the heading looks a little bit tricky, but that is just the name of the section. We are actually not going to solve inequalities here. So let's start with rational equations. Rational equations are any equation that contains one or more rational expressions. Well, what does that mean? Well, here's a rational expression, here's a rational expression, and the equal sign makes it an equation. So when we solve e these equations, they're a lot like simplifying rational expressions, but li with a little twist with that equal sign. First thing that we have to do is find our common denominator between all three of these guys. Now my common denominator I'm going to put over here and that's going to be what? As far as my numbers, 4 also goes into 24. And then I'm going to also have to take that times 3 minus x. So I'm looking to get my denominators here, here, and here all to this right here. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Starting at 24, what does 24 need? It just needs a 3 minus x. So I'm going to take it 3 minus x x and I'm going to take it times 3 minus x. Now, how do I get this 3 minus x to be our common denominator? I need to take that times 24. So I take that times 24. Then, the 4, what do I need to take that to get to 24? I need to take that times 6, top and bottom. And then I also need that 3 minus x here and 3 minus x there. Now when we solve equations, ladies and gentlemen, once you get to the same common denominator, we no longer need that common denominator. So I'm going to write 5 times 3 minus x, and then that's going to be a plus 24 times 2, and that's going to equal, it's going to equal 1 times 6 times 3 minus x. Once you get here, now it's just like solving any equation that you have seen with x. So let's go ahead and do that. We have 15 minus 5x. Then we have plus 48. And that's going to equal, and then 1 times anything is just 1, right? So it's 18 minus 6x. Now once you get here, we're just solving for x. Combine like terms on this side. We have a negative 5x, and then 15 plus 48 is going to be a plus 63. That equals 18 minus 6x. Then I, I'm adding this x over here, so it's going to be a positive x plus 63 equals 18. And then I have to subtract the 63 over, so x equals a negative 45 for our solution. But, ladies and gentlemen, we have to check these answers to make sure they add up. So I'm going to plug in negative 45 in for all my x's. So I have 5 over 24 plus 2, and now that's going to go over 3 minus a negative 45 that equals 1 fourth. Well, we have 5 over 24 plus 2 over, and then 3, and now it minus a negative turn into a plus, so it's going to be 2 over 48 equals 1 fourth. And now does this add up to 1 fourth? It's 1 fourth equals 1 fourth, so it's good. So our answer then checks out, x does equal a negative 45. Now with number 2, it looks a little bit trickier as we have this polynomial right here. But let's just factor this polynomial so it's going to be x plus 5 and x plus 3 because 3 and 5 multiply to 15 but add up to 8. So our common denominator is going to be x plus 5 and x plus or times x plus 3. So here we go. 
what do I have to get this denominator? What do I have to take times this denominator to get this? Well, that's going to be x plus 3. So what you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. Now, this is already at my common denominator. And so then we move on to here. What do I need to multiply this to get that? That's going to be x plus 5. So what did I do to the bottom? I have to do to the top. Once we found the same bottom with equations, ladies and gentlemen, we can just bring it down. Here it's going to be 2x and then x plus 3. Or we're just bringing down the top. We're just bringing down the top. Now, be very careful, ladies and gentlemen. This gets a lot of people. With this minus right here, we have to put this guy in parentheses. So it's going to be a minus x squared minus x minus 10. We are putting that in parentheses. That's going to equal now 3 times x plus 5. Once we get to this step, now we can just simplify like you have been doing. So it's 2x times x, which is a 2x squared plus 6x. Now, here's the big reason why we put this in parentheses, because it's a negative x squared plus x plus 10. That's going to equal... 3x plus 15. We sim simplify this side to get an x squared plus 7x plus 10. That equals 3x plus 15, bringing everything over to the other side. Now it is x squared plus 4x minus 5. That equals 0. Factor to get x plus 5, x minus 1, that equals 0. Here we come up with x plus 5 equals 0. What else do we have equals 0? x minus 1 equals 0. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we can say that x equals a negative 5 and an x equals 1. Now, we have to check these. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what we want to do is put in negative 5 in for all your x's or is there a little bit easier way? We can put this negative 5 in for that x, right on the bottom of the fraction. Well, I have negative 5 plus 5. That's going to give me 0. Can I divide by 0? No, you cannot divide by 0. So since we put it on the bottom and got 0, we cannot divide or we cannot have negative 5 as our solution. Then we look at 1. If we put 1 in, does that give me a number not 0? Yes. If I put 1 in here and here, not 0 correct, and 1 in here, not 0. So our only answer is now x equals 1. So, ladies and gentlemen, there will be cases where we do not, or we come up with a solution, we check it, and that is not in our solution set. One more. Here we go. Now look at all the bottoms. We need to get all those numbers to a common denominator. First thing we have to do is factor. So I factor. I take out a 3 from here to get n plus 1. Take out a 4 from here to get n minus 1. Take out a 2 from here to get n plus 1. Now we look at all of our factors. Well, what do we have? What's going to be common for our numbers? Multiply them up, they give us 24, but they also multiply to 12. All of them go into 12. Then our polynomials, we have an n plus 1. And we have an n minus 1. Looking to get all my denominators to this guy right here. Now, what do I need to take times that 3 to get 12? I need to take it times 4. How about what am I missing from my polynomials? n minus 1. So I need to take this guy times 4 and n minus 1. Moving here. What do I need to take the 4 times to get 12? I need to take that times 3, and then I need an n plus 1 for my polynomial. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. And then here, what do I need to take times 2 to get 12? I need to take it times 6, and then I need an n minus 1. What you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So now once we do that, we're ready to go. So once we have the same common denominator, just drop it and worry about the top. We have 7n times 4 and then n minus 1. 
Again, ladies and gentlemen, be very careful with that minus sign, minus 5 times 3n plus 1. And then that's going to equal 3n times 6 and then n minus 1. Let's simplify everything. We have a 7n, and now I'm going to put, I'm going to distribute this 4 first. You can take this 7n times 4, not a big deal, but it's going to be 4n minus 4, and then we have a minus 5 times 3n plus 3, and then finally 3n times 6n minus 6. Let's continue with this. Here, let's distribute everything into those parentheses. It's 28n squared minus 28n. And then in the blue, we have minus 15n minus 15. That equals 18n squared minus 18n. Clean everything up, ladies and gentlemen. We have 28n squared, combining our like terms, minus 43n minus 15. That's going to equal 18n squared minus 18n. Since we have a squared term, we need to get everything to the same side. So I'm going to bring everything over to the left side of the equation. We have 10n squared minus 25n minus 15. That equals 0. Now, we have to factor this. Yes, you want to multiply first term times the last term, but can we factor out anything to make it simpler? Yes, we can. We take out a 5, so we are left with 2n squared minus 5n minus 3. That equals 0. First term times the last term is negative 6, so we need factors of negative 6. That add up to negative 5, so we bring the 2n two, two down and the 2n down we have a minus 6 and a plus 1. We set it equal to 0. We'll close that 0 off. Take it times 5 up front. Now, we need to take a 2 out, right? Because we brought too many 2's down, so it's 5 times n minus 3 times 2n plus 1 equals 0 set these guys, we do not care about the 5, we set these guys equal to 0. So it's going to be n minus 3 equals 0. So we have n equals 3. And then we have 2n plus 1 equals 0. Subtract over the 1, 2n equals a negative 1. Divide by 2, n equals a negative 1 half. Finally, now we go ahead and check the 3. We put it in for just the bottoms. It is positive, it is positive, it is positive here. So, n does equal 3, then we put in 1 half. It is positive, it is not 0 here, and it is not 0 here. So, n does equal a negative 1 half. So, we found both of our solutions. Sometimes you'll have two solutions, sometimes you'll have one solution, sometimes you'll have no solutions if we check it. Uh, well, ladies and gentlemen, yes, it is a lot of work. Yes, it does check some of your abilities, but just hang in there, go by the process, and you will be fine. And that does it for section 8.6, solving rational e equations and inequalities. Good day.